Molecular geometry and individual bond dipole moments often lead to molecules having dipole moments. So which of the following has an electric dipole moment? CHCl2, methylene chloride, SO2, sulfur dioxide, or BRF3, bromine trifluoride? Think about that for a minute and make a selection. Let's look at possible explanations for each answer. CHCl2 is tetrahedral, so it has a dipole moment. Or B, SO2 is bent, so it has a dipole moment. Or 3, BF3 is a bent T, so it has a dipole moment. Think about those three and make another selection. We're determining dipole moments for molecules. To do that, we need the molecular geometry. To get the molecular geometry, you have to go through the process of writing a good Lewis structure and getting the steric number on the central atom. So I've done those steps for these molecules, and I've presented just the final molecular geometry. So for CHCl2, a tetrahedral conformation, and this tetrahedral conformation is going to lead to a dipole moment. The Cl atoms are more electronegative than the carbon. There'll be a dipole moment pointing away from the Cl atoms. And the H atoms, there'll also be a small dipole moment. Those won't cancel out. The whole molecule will have a dipole moment. SO2 is a bent molecule. It's not a linear molecule like CO2. So the bent configuration leads to a dipole moment for SO2. And for BRF3, now this molecule is not trigonal. If it were perfectly trigonal and symmetric, the dipoles might cancel out. But in this case, there's enough electron pairs around the bromine that you have a bent T configuration, steric number 5. So this molecule also will have a dipole moment. So in this case, we've been a little tricky. All three actually have dipole moments. And indeed, it's common, more common for molecules to have dipole moments than to not have them. Because remember, every individual bond has a dipole moment. And for them to cancel out, you need a very exact symmetry in the molecule. These molecules, not symmetric, so they have dipole moments.